After using Proton Mail for the past 12 months, I have mixed feelings. I want to love Proton Mail, but as I was reflecting on the pros and cons, I came up with a lot more cons than expected. So in this video, I'm going to share what I love and hate about Proton Mail, and I'll tell you if it's worth trying. Now, why did I switch to Proton Mail in the first place? I started out on Gmail, but in an effort to distance myself from the Google overlords, I decided to switch to a privacy-focused email provider. I switched to Skip Mail and I loved it. But sadly, less than a year after I switched, Skip was acquired by Notion Mail and shut down. So I had to migrate again. And of the remaining privacy focused providers, Proton Mail fit my needs best. If you're curious as to why, make sure you're subscribed as I'll be making an updated comparison video soon. But that's how I started using Proton Mail. So what do I love about it? Proton Mail balances privacy, security, and user experience well. I find that other encrypted email providers tend to fall into one of two traps. They either have subpar apps to check mail with no support for IMAP and SMTP, or they do support IMAP and SMTP with no added security measures. The reason this matters is because IMAP and SMTP aren't the most secure way of checking your email. These protocols don't support two-factor authentication, and since you're only as strong as your weakest link, that means you might as well not have two-factor authentication enabled on your account. But more on that later. Another thing I love about ProtonMail is the apps are actually enjoyable to use. They're available for web, iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, and Linux. If you'd rather use your own email client, ProtonBridge for Mac, Windows, and Linux decrypts emails on your device and creates local IMAP and SMTP servers for your client to connect to. This is a brilliant middle ground that preserves the ideology behind encrypted email service while unlocking the familiarity of your preferred email client. Unfortunately, ProtonBridge is not supported on mobile, so you'll be forced to use the ProtonMail apps, but I'm happy to Live with this limitation for the added security. And it hasn't felt like a limitation since I've been using the Proton Mail apps by choice. They're simple, clean mail apps that get the job done for a personal email address. I'd want more out of it if it was a business inbox, but more on that later. The next thing I love about ProtonMail is the advanced security features. It's the little things like having the option to opt into using two passwords, one for your account and one for your decryption key. And if you're thinking, is this level of security really necessary? I guess it depends on the value of your data and how much you're in the public light. But I like having the option of Fort Knox security. See, ProtonMail supports PGP encryption, so you can send end-to-end -end encrypted emails to other PGP-supported email addresses. But as you've probably noticed, there aren't many ProtonMail emails out in the wild. So if you need to send a secure message to a non-ProtonMail user, you can send a password-protected email and the recipient can reply securely in the online interface without breaking the encryption. ProtonMail handles security well, but I also appreciate the privacy aspects. Knowing that I own my data and I'm not being targeted by ads is the biggest sell. I give Google enough of my data through its other services, and I realized that Gmail was a service that I could live without. But ProtonMail isn't without its flaws. In fact, it has a lot of flaws. And that brings me to what I hate about ProtonMail. If you're a ProtonMail user, you probably know what I'm about to say. It's the downtime. ProtonMail was rock solid for many months, but lately it's faced repeated and extended downtime incidents. I remember one time I had to drop off a return at the UPS store, so I got in my car, drove all the way to the store, opened the ProtonMail app to get the return QR code from my email, but my inbox wouldn't load. I figured it had to be a cellular issue, so I drove my car around the parking lot for a few minutes hoping to get better signal. After a few minutes, I concluded that ProtonMail must be down. I was able to load other apps, but not ProtonMail. After a recent outage, Proton shared that they're currently in the process of migrating their entire infrastructure, and they currently have to run two infrastructures at the same time. While this transition is happening, they don't have the extra capacity to handle increased server load. So I'm hoping that I've just caught ProtonMail at a bad time and future years will be rock solid reliable, but this has been the most frustrating part of my experience this past year. Many users on X seem to share the same sentiment. My next gripe is that the desktop app is glitchy. It was just released in beta when I started using ProtonMail, so it's still relatively young, but it has this quirk where sometimes emails will reappear in the inbox a second or two after you click the trash can button or archive button. It's hard to describe and 
I'm not sure if I'll be able to replicate it in a screen recording, but the desktop app is much more buggy than the mobile apps or web app, so hopefully it will improve over time. I also feel that ProtonMail lacks productivity features. It's a bare bones experience. There's no automatic mail grouping into categories like in Gmail, there's no way to analyze your newsletters and bulk unsubscribe from the ones you don't want, and there's no AI summaries of threads. Obviously, these things will be less important to Proton's target users, but I still don't think it's an excuse for the lack of innovation. Email can be private, secure, and productive at the same time. It's also disappointing that the hide my email alias is restricted to 10 emails unless you have Proton Unlimited. This is a feature of Proton Pass, but it feels like a missed opportunity to include it in Proton Mail for those of us who prefer a different password manager. So, as you can see, ProtonMail is far from perfect, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I found it easier to think of the cons than the pros. This caused me to consider why I'm still using ProtonMail. If I found so many negatives, why not switch away? Well, because I feel like all of the encrypted email providers have significant flaws in different areas, and ProtonMail still fits my preferences best. I knew that I was sacrificing some reliability and fancy features when I left Gmail. It's hard to compete with Google's server infrastructure and AI resources. But I was okay with that because more than anything, I just want to own my data and have full control over my personal email, and I'm willing to make the necessary trade-offs. However, I don't use ProtonMail for my business email, and I probably wouldn't recommend that you do either. I'm using Google Workspace for my business inbox because I need the most reliable email hosting with the best deliverability, spam filter, and productivity features, and I don't think you can beat Gmail email for those things. So whether ProtonMail is worth it to you depends on your goals. If you're seeking a rock solid, reliable email provider with innovative new features, ProtonMail is not for you. I'll be sticking to ProtonMail, but if you're curious how it stacks up to other encrypted email providers, you can watch my comparison here.